it's cold outside. See my breath. It's time to get this thing out of her summer, spring, early fall home. Get her back over into heavy pedal garage. We got some work to do, a few things to sort out, but man, she sounds good when she's cold. I've been enjoying this car, but I've also been chasing a few issues. So got her back in heavy pedal garage, and we're just going to take a little bit of time to go through this thing. The biggest deal is that I've got some pinging issues at wide open throttle. So we're going to go through a few of the different reasons that can cause pinging and sort of the scientific method that I've got going on in my brain to try to figure out what's happening with this motor. Now it's running fine. I've backed the timing all the way off so that we're not pinging. I'm running about five or six degrees of initial timing, but it's killing me because I know that this thing should be taken 10 to 12. So we're going to go through it. I'm going to tell you what's in my mind and we're going to see if we can't figure this out together. I'm by no means an expert at this. I'm digging in on the web, watching YouTube videos as we go, trying to figure this out. So I'm going to share with you what I've learned, what I think I've learned. And if we can't solve this in this video, maybe you guys can give me some tips and tricks on how I can get this thing running a little bit better. So let me give you some basics. This is a Pontiac 455. It was built by Len Williams Auto Machine. You can look him up on the web. But it's got an 041 cam in it, 6X heads, and it's been milled to about nine and a quarter um, compression ratio. So everything else is pretty much stock. It's got a four barrel Rochester, a stock uh, distributor, HEI, and both the carburetor and the distributor were tuned up and rebuilt by Cliff Ruggles. So if you're in the Pontiac world, you probably know that name. He's, he's here in Ohio and um, had him do both the distributor and my carburetor to make sure this thing was right. So we'll rule out some of those issues um, because the distributor and carburetor should be right, but that doesn't mean that it's not tuned properly. So like I said, at uh, wide open throttle and under heavy load, I've got that pinging. And that is not good. When your fuel is igniting at the wrong time, it causes that spark knock, that ping, that rattling sound, and it's not good. It can damage your pistons, your rings, your valves. Just, you hear that, you need to back off and figure out what's going on. So I've been working through the system here, and you know I know the different things that can cause this pinging. Um, one could be the octane of the fuel, or bad fuel. If you don't have enough octane, um, you can have issues which is tied to your compression. So if your compression ratio is too high, your octane's too low, you're going to have problems. So that's one thing I've been considering. The other that can cause this is overheating. If your motor is running too hot or if you've got hot spots in your combustion chamber from carbon buildup, you can also have issues because it's you know igniting and uh, running hot and just, again, causing that pinging. So I know I don't have carbon buildup because it's a brand new engine um, or a brand new rebuilt engine. But, you know, I could be running hot, but I, I don't think so because I've got temperature gauges. Now we are gonna check and verify those gauges just to make sure that we're in good shape, but I don't, I don't think it's that either. Is it a lean condition? Lean conditions can cause overheating. You're not having that extra fuel uh, to kind of cool down the combustion chamber. You know, you could have vacuum leaks that are increasing the, the amount of air in your cylinders. Um, so, you know, a lean condition based on vacuum leaks or an improper tuning can cause some issues here. So uh, another thing that can really throw you off here is your timing. So that's often a very common pro cause of uh, these ignition, pre-ignition, detonation, pinging, spark knock, is that your, your timing's off. So I'm just dying here though, because I know that this car should take 10 to 12 degrees of initial timing, and I'm not able to do that. So we need to go through this in a methodical way and try to figure out what's happening. So I'll just tell you too, one of the other things that I am having problems with 
is that when I am at wide open throttle, I'm getting some breakup. It's like it's falling on its face. And I almost thought at first that maybe I needed to upsize my fuel system. But the more I think about things, the more I think that these two issues may be related. But it's taken me all summer for a big light bulb to go off. So that's any clue to what my hypothesis is to what these issues may be. Think about it a little bit, and in the end of this, hopefully we're going to test out the hypothesis and see if it's right. The first thing that I'm going to rule out is my spark plugs. Okay, so what I'm running in there is the 43TS, and, you know, you can kind of see the plug looks pretty normal. Um, you know, I never pulled off the side of the road when the engine was breaking up at wide open throttle to see if maybe this was kind of hot, running lean, but... You know, if anything, these R43s are probably a little cool from what I'm reading. So it's probably not the spark plug. So I'm really hoping that Cliff did me right. The distributor curve should be good and the carburetor should be set up right. I mean, he knew what kind of setup I was putting into this car. So the carburetor should have been built appropriately. And I have tuned this carburetor many times this summer using a vacuum gauge trying to get everything just right on that. So I'm, I'm pretty much ruling out the carburetor and uh, from any kind of uh, issues with the jetting or you know a lean condition, um, I don't think Cliff would have messed it up, but I'm hoping that's not the case. I've got two sets of gauges in the car. These came off of uh, Amazon and they're just kind of a cheap gauge. So my temperature reading is good, but I have had some issues with this gauge. This wire here, um, I think what happened was it, it kind of burned through a little bit and I was getting a bad reading, but it's kind of been on and off. I even put a new sender in there to just make sure everything's right, but it's back on. I mean, everything's working with the gauge. It's running like 195 to 200, but again, I'm not 100% sure on that gauge. So I do have these nice Bosch ones up here that I installed for just the break-in and I really like them here, so I'm, I'm not taking them down. But this one, I have fidgeted around with capillary tube enough that it's not working. So um, I'm going to replace that with a better gauge. And having a second heat gauge, temperature gauge in here is going to help me verify that that cheap gauge that I got off of Amazon is reading the right temperature and that I, in fact, not having overheating issues. The other thing that I've got going on here with my fan, um, it kind of wobbles a little bit. And if you can see... This bearing right here where the fan itself mounts to the shaft, um, it wobbles. It's like a loose bearing. So I do have a brand new fan clutch to put in there that'll rectify that issue. Again, I don't think that's going to be the problem, a wobbly fan. But in investigating this problem, I noticed that was an issue. So we're going to go ahead and get that fixed as well. So I'm pretty sure I don't have any vacuum leaks. I've got everything properly plugged off on the carburetor. I even spent some time mapping the different ports. Is it, you know, manifold vacuum or ported vacuum? And, uh, you know, everything's hooked up right. Other sources of vacuum leaks could be the intake where it's attached. And then, of course, this here is the old EGR valve location. This is a stock Pontiac intake. And uh, I have a gasket here with a plate that I made in the original bracket that held the EGR in place is holding that bracket in place. So I don't think those are the issues, but we're going to put that on the back burner as well. Not totally ruling out, but I don't think that's what it is. So yeah, narrowing it down. Process of elimination, test and tune. You know, racking my brain on this all summer long, but what about fuel? Okay. When we broke the motor in, broke it in on 85, 87, whatever it is, and it ran fine. I had it out in the neighborhood a little bit, you know, gave it the onions a few times, never had any pinging issues. So that further compounds my thought process here. What am I doing? What am I doing wrong? How is this all related? Uh, it's just a struggle. So I ended up, you know, putting 93 in it, trying to retune, retune, um, even disconnected the vacuum advance and plugged that off just to make sure I'm rolling out variables here. But fuel, it's running 93 octane all summer long. Compression ratio is nine and a quarter to one, or is it 91 octane? Anyways, 91 or 93, whatever the top end is here in the east. So 
been running it all summer long. It's still, every time I go to turn that timing up, it's having issues. But nine and a quarter to one compression ratio, that octane should be fine. The general rule of thumb, take the octane, divide by 10, and that's kind of the fuel that you should run. So if you're in the, you know, eight, Compression ratio range, you know, 80 something octane should be fine. If you're in the low nines like I am with compression ratio, that 90 some octane ought to be fine. So I certainly don't think I have to add octane to the fuel. I was, you know, told this would run on pump gas and I do believe that it will and it should. So as I mentioned, not only was I trying to figure out this whole ignition timing, pre-detonation, pinging thing, but I was also dealing with the car falling flat on its face at wide open throttle. And my original thought on that was that this thing is just pulling so much fuel that I need to upgrade the uh, size of the fuel lines to make sure that it's, it's given it enough. But it finally occurred to me that the fuel pump that I have on there came with the car and I completely forgot that the guy that I bought it from told me that there's a fuel pump in the box, it's brand new, but it might not be the right one. Well, I never even thought about that uh, when I put the motor together. I just had a new fuel pump in a box and I put it on. Is that my issue? This is the Carter M6122, which comes up as being the right one for this Pontiac. I mean, look at the depth of that canister. Yeah, and look at how shallow the one is that I have on here. So when that hit me and I started looking at the differences in these fuel pumps, a big you know, light bulb went off. And the other thing that I had happen when I went to install the fuel line on that, I bought a brand new stainless steel fuel line that was made to fit the Pontiac 455. And when I went to install it, the line itself was too tall, it was too long. So in order to get the motor broke in, I had to cut a section out of the fuel line to shorten it up and then I just used a piece of rubber hose and some clamps to tighten that all up. And I could never figure out what the heck, you know, I I could never figure out why I had to do that. And I was kind of irritated that I had to cut a stainless steel, you know, line that I had just bought. But when that light bulb went off, I was like, holy cow, I can fix that issue too because having that fuel pump be as deep as it is you know, that's gonna make up the difference in that fuel line that I had to cut out because I was running that shallower fuel pump. So stick with me. We're gonna go ahead and pull that pump out. We're gonna get this new line put on and we're gonna change out some of that other stuff and we're gonna see if this actually works. show you this before we put the fuel line in. This is the snout off of the Rochester. This is the side that goes into the carb. This is the side that the fuel line goes into. And your fuel filter is going to be inside of there. But you've got this little gasket and there's a lip. You see how that lip's raised? So that needs to go on like that with the raised lip outward. Or I guess inward towards the carb. And then your filter needs to go in with the check valve towards the fuel line, like that. And then when you insert this contraption into the snout of the carb, your spring goes on the back solid side of the fuel filter like that. So that will help keep your carb bowl filled up when your car is setting. If you don't have that check valve in, your bowl back drains and when you go to start you got to crank it a little while to get it to to kick off because there's no fuel in the bowl or less fuel in the bowl
that all went well. We got the better fuel pump on there, the one that's supposed to be on there. So after all of that thinking and connecting the dots, finally, what I think was happening is that the two issues were combined, okay? The pinging and the detonation wasn't necessarily a timing issue or a fuel octane issue, which was what I was chasing at first. It ends up being a lean condition issue because the fuel pump wasn't sized right at wide open throttle. It's not pumping fuel into the carburetor and then into the engine. So we had a lean condition because of that fuel pump. I'm going to fix the fan tonight, put that clutch on there, and then I'm also going to put that gauge on. And then hopefully tomorrow the weather's good and we can get this thing back out and we'll do some carb tuning check the timing and try to inch that timing back up towards 12 and we'll see if we can let this thing rip because I know at 12 degrees timing, initial timing, this thing is ready to go. So I was adjusting my fast idle right there. It was set a little low. I'll watch this choke do its thing. But we're just gonna let her warm up Check the gauge. That is spinning true and perfect. Watch for leaks on the fuel pump. And I'll bring you back. I'm pretty sure that did the trick because this thing is romping. So lean condition, bad fuel pump, not the right fuel pump. She's got plenty of fuel, spent some time tuning it up. As you saw, I got the carb balanced and uh, use that vacuum gauge to get everything just right. So we're gonna go for a ride. What do you think?
make that work. But the temperature's real good. It's running a little bit cooler. The idle quality is improved. And uh, the acceleration. So no more pinging at wide open throttle. It's got nice shift points. So that was definitely the ticket, guys. Pretty excited about that because I've been fighting it all summer long. Just scratching my head trying to figure out what was going on. Thanks for checking out Heavy Pedal Garage, guys. I appreciate all of you. And just remember, you ain't moving, your car's not either. So catch me next time.